Can you believe it's already been four years since we talked about biscuit joiners? Where does the time go? Now, before you click away thinking this might be the most boring subject on YouTube, give me a chance. After you see what I'm going to show you, I think you might end up fighting over one of these the next time you see one at a yard sale or a flea market, because this is one of the most misunderstood tools in the shop. It is much more valuable than you may think, if you know what it can do, and equally as important, what it shouldn't be used for. I'll bet 80% of the biscuit joiners in shops and garages today were bought during the run of the New Yankee Workshop on PBS. Norm Abram loved him some biscuits. He used this thing in nearly every project. And he used it for some things that nobody should even attempt to do. More on that in a minute. But was he wrong? Is this a useless gimmick? Or is it a valuable piece of woodworking equipment that you should consider adding to your shop? Well, I don't sell biscuit joiners but I do use them. So let me give you an unbiased assessment. Though they are stronger than some people give them credit for, biscuits shouldn't be confused with loose tenons like those little dominoes or even a good dowel joint. I don't think you ever really saw Norm trying to connect legs to tables and chairs with biscuits. They just aren't strong enough for that. But what you did see him do was use biscuits to edge glue panels or to assemble casework boxes for cabinets and chests. In these applications, the biscuit adds a little bit of strength, but what they are great at is assisting greatly in your assembly. Well-cut biscuit slots will help your parts go together perfectly flush, preventing them from slipping out of alignment when you add glue and clamps. That can mean faster, stress-free glue-ups and a lot less sanding later. Notice I said well-cut biscuit slots. If your biscuits fit too loosely so they wobble in the slot, it's not going to help you align anything. Biscuits are meant to absorb glue and swell for a tighter fit, but even without glue, a biscuit should not fit too loosely in the slot. Poorly fitting slots are usually caused by a bad biscuit joiner. The cutter may not run true or the fence may not remain rigid, and that can create a slot that's wider than the thickness of the blade and the biscuit. Another problem may be the biscuit itself. These can shrink or expand based on the climate, so you have to keep them in a sealed container or bag. If your biscuits usually fit well, but for one project they seem like they're extra loose or dry, spritz them with a little water to swell them up a bit, especially if you don't intend to use glue to swell them inside the slot. If it's a humid day and your biscuits have to be hammered into the slots, throw them in the microwave for a minute or two of drying. Of course, I'm not saying biscuits should be used in every joint. There are other ways to align your work pieces. In fact, most of the time you probably don't need them, but they can be really helpful in a lot of situations such as large glue ups like big casework or giant panels for counters and tabletops. A while back, we were edge gluing thick walnut planks for some counters and without the biscuits, it would have been really difficult to force out these bows and get these things together before the glue started to set up. The biscuits didn't replace calls to keep the panel flat while it dried, but they made things a lot easier to align and get clamped up. Of course, there are also some downsides to using biscuits. For one thing, if you cut a slot too close to the outer surface of a panel, over time the biscuit can shrink more than the panel itself. Now if the biscuit was glued in that slot, as it shrinks it can pull down the wood fibers and create a visible indentation on the finished surface. So on things like tabletops, you might want to install them closer to the bottom surface than to the top surface. Now here's something I see people do from time to time. In fact, this image is from an early episode of the New Yankee Workshop. Norm himself was guilty of this. The cutter in a biscuit joiner is a small saw blade, and just like a table saw, it can bind in the kerf and kick that piece of wood out of your hand, leaving nothing between you and the cutter. I know the blade is designed to retract back into the machine, but dirt and corrosion can slow that spring mechanism. Do you really want to see if your hand gets to that blade before it's fully withdrawn? A biscuit joiner is a useful tool, but you must remember a biscuit is not a tenon. Think of it like a spline. It'll help you align project parts, but it's not going to add a lot of strength to the joint. Is that enough to justify buying a biscuit joiner? I don't think at full price. These things are expensive but it is enough to justify borrowing one from a friend once in a while. Just make sure he has a good one. A cheap biscuit joiner is worse than none at all. If you find yourself using it a lot, 
then offer to buy it from your friend because he's probably not using his at all. Or track down a used one. If you can get a good brand that's in good shape for under 100 bucks, jump on it. Eventually, you're going to be glad you had it. Bottom line is a biscuit joiner is a tool that can be very useful if it's used properly and it fits into your workflow. That's why Norm liked it, and it's why I do too. Of course, I do use mine a lot less now that I own a Domino, but that's another subject for another day. Before you go, it'll really help me out if you'll just watch 30 more seconds. Some folks are a pleasure to work with, like Ken Rizzo over at woodturnerswonders.com. That's where I get my turning stuff, like sanding supplies and CBN wheels for my grinder. Seriously, if you haven't seen what CBN wheels can do for you, you are missing out. I'll put a link below this video. Use it and tell Ken I sent you.